Hey YouTube and Prince fans, here is a, oh, what year was in 80s, late 80s, Honor Arbor series Telecaster, and the reason I said Prince is because you recognise it, um, it's the same range as Prince's one, Prince's one is a slightly different, it's not the white one, so it's got like a, a strip down the middle and it's sort of blonde on either side, but it's got this sort of bit of scratch plate telly bridge thing, you know, like a normal telly bridge would look more like this with a pickup in it this has got like a a different kind of bridge I just don't want to fall over yeah um so two single coil pickups three way switch cool um I don't even know what you tortoiseshell type scratch plate um actually originally Prince apparently bought his because he had a like a leopard skin strap that matched the scratch plates, that's why I bought the guitar, and used it way more than he had to, like for years and years. He refused to let anyone, I think he, do you know, I think he picked, coloured the pickups in with a black pen, um, but he used it for a lot of things. Not really that much of a Prince fan, I'm sorry, I don't really know that much stuff about him. I know he's amazing at the guitar, um, particularly a video for his playing While well, My Guitar Gently Weeps with Tom Petty and maybe the George Harrison tribute concert, something like that, and it just comes out, it's just bleh, pure plain bad lead all over the top. Yeah, so I did it took a wee bit of work to get going, but we're all there. The bridge we were con I was concerned with, um, because it's not back strung, it's also not top strung. It's got like a sort of keyhole thing where you slide the saddle back, slot the string in uh that way. But it was all set up funny. Um this is kind of, kind of kind of explaining to the owner why <laughs> what the issue was. So this the br the the neck. Someone's this is because it's forty years old. People have been in this before. Um, it's been messed about with. There's an indentation in the neck pocket, which looked like it had a washer in it, as a as a shim, probably from the factory, which isn't there anymore. Which meant that I I shimmed the neck now, which basically means put bits of. I put a bit of cardboard behind it to bring the angle back, which brought the bridge up, brought the action down, did the truss rods, and then the bridge suddenly works. But when, when I got it, I was looking at it, and it was like, how the hell do you get the strings off? Because because the action was so high, the intonation was all over the place. So the, the, the saddles were right far back, and it was like you had to take the saddles off to change the strings. Now, I'm pretty sure we get away with it without having to do that. So basically, to change the strings on this, you take the string off, and you kind of physically push... The saddle back on the spring and you can see the bit you put the um string into not the best design it's a bit fidgety because eh? you have to kind of put it in it's kind of a wee bit of like wiring a big um, string in a bigsby type thing so you put it in but you have to keep tension on it while you put it through the tuner because if you don't put tension on it it just comes back out again so you end up going oh tighten up and then the string just is just hanging looking damn it so you have to undo bit fidgety once you've done it once it'll be fine though so, um so playing through the orange TH30, no pedals, neck pickup. As you can see, these are more these are strap pickups, but more strap pickups than tele pickups. But bridge pickup. Both pickups. As far as I can tell, this is pretty much all original, although the earth wire, and I know this because I've done it before, has, has been replaced with um, what you used to get in phone cables. You get like wee white solid wire with like, it's like white things with coloured bands on it. That's what the earth wire is, so that, that's kind of how I know someone's been in it before. Um, but all working now, just, it's amazing what Switch Cleaner does. Nice and clean. I'm feeling so much better today. Um, I've been struggling with the COVID for the last 
It was like a week of being ill and then a week of just being tired and worn out, but not physically anything really wrong with me. Today I woke up like that, oh, that could be the bottle of bucket I had last night, though, maybe it energised me. <laughs>
again, I see why Prince stuck it, held on to it for so long. Um, apparently, it was um, was it David Schechter from Schechter Guitars? Like, you know, people would complain. You went to the studio and put the engineer, but like, honors like we've got a Fender here. I don't got got my honor. I think um, and later on, he got copies built from by Schechter, like hand built thousands of pound jobs, um, which would have been better. But I mean. If you're spending thousands of pounds as opposed to a couple of hundred quid, obviously it's going to be a bit better. Um, but I mean, it's got a really nice neck on it. Love the look, it's white. Scratch plate's a bit mad looking. Um, decent rosewood fingerboard. It's kind of jumbo frets on it, which is a bit surprising. The tuners are not um, the best in the world. It's, it's, uh, it's those type, but I mean, they work. They hold. They're not awful. They just, I suppose, basically, they just look a bit bad because you see these, that this type, and those are the ones you get on really, really cheap guitars. Or there's, it's that design rather than being your goto type ones, which are on. Again, I'll pick up this telly. You know, you know that that kind of. Oh no, that's Clusons on that one. Sorry, bad design. This one. <laughs> This one has a, you know, that, that's what goto tuners or goto style tuners look like, which generally you would assume to be better, but not necessarily. Um, I've had, you get plenty of modern guitars that come with tuners that look like that, that are pants. You get a lot of guitars that have got tuners that look like this, that are pants. This has got tuners that look like this, that aren't. It's, it's not the design that's wrong, it's how cheaply they try to make them. You know, this in this era... I don't think you'd yet develop the ability to make really, 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 really thin metal. So it's like they've stuck, they're made of, or you even get ones that have got plastic. You know, like, you don't want plastic. I mean, plastic buttons on the end's fine, but when you get plastic gearing and like a plastic shaft, you don't want that. You want as metal as you can get. Um, but it's actually, it's amazing what a wee setup does. I mean, this was, was not playing very well when I got it. It was just, uh, as I said, neck angle um truss rods are an imperial truss rod and I, to be honest i don't know if i've ever actually come across an imperial you know you're sitting there with the allen keys it's normally the five mil one or the four mil and it's, it's neither of them it's not the four and a half either it's, it's kind of smaller than the, the five doesn't quite fit in and it's like it's the imperial six seventh and a quarter inch whatever it is um version so if you've got one of these make sure you've got the full allen key set i want to stress that the way to have allen keys is to have a set this was just a b&q job um, i've actually replaced some of them with when they started getting worn out but i religiously keep them in their the right order i used to do it with like you know the, the, like a, an ice cream tub just full of allen keys and you just try, you end up trying about 20 whereas on this one you try one you go oh it's the bigger one so you can go up one, you don't have to rummage through the box try to find one. Is that bigger? Is that smaller? You know, like, in order, you can work your way around. That's why I knew. So that's actually the one that is. It's a 3 sixteenths, not the 5 mil or the 4 mil, which are the normal ones, um, if you're just in the truss road. It's like, with these guitars, it's like, I know guitar, you're, there's always a panic when you get to the truss road and you're turning it. It's like, is it going to turn? Well, okay, it's turning. Is it doing anything? Yes. That's, that's what kills a lot of guitars like this because you get to the point of if the truss rod's broken I've actually got a, a bay if I've got a couple of necks kicking about and it's like if it's a 1952 well, I don't know if the 1952 Telecaster had a, a, 1950, a, 50, a 1955 Telecaster Fender one it's worth 20 grand you know or whatever it is yes it's totally worth steaming off the fingerboard putting a new truss rod in putting the fingerboard back on again and refretting it it's worth doing. It's not worth doing on any guitar that's worth less than 500 quid because I think that's pretty much how much it would cost to do that, unless it's a, a very special guitar to you. You know, you've had it since you were 15 or whatever. Um, so, trust rod all good. Fret's all good. It's quite, that's a really weird fret wear on it. Like, on the first fret. I don't know. You, you never... You, you, you always get them um, fret wear, you know, the cowboy chords under the D, so it's like kind of here and here and then under the A, you know, under the main chords when someone starts off playing the guitar, you obviously you hold the strings as hard in as you can. 
you pull it in and you never change the strings, so the strings are all rusty and you just batter away at the open chords, which normally makes sense. But I don't know what, how you how you dent the first fret unless you're playing something funny, I don't know. I'm just doing that all the time. Not even then. Normally I thought the bending would have done it, so it's literally just Arabic sound, isn't it? And the, the body's finest tone ply. Um, oh, it's actually got a, a contour, like a strat on the top and a belly cut on the back. So like a normal telly would just be like a, a slab, which is actually a little bit comfier. Um, so it's kind of, when I go as far as it was a super telly, it's like, you know, you get, they, they modify them up. You get, it's like, it's like a modern telly. Oh, actually the serial number I might say. E7, so it's an 1987, so... 35 years old. Not looking bad for 35. And it's got the, the, um, like, the way, see the way, like, the, the pickups have aged. Actually, I'm sorry, Alexander, I cleaned that pickup, it was dirty, it was annoying me. Uh, but it's gone that sort of yellow colour, naturally, which you can't do. I mean, I've played, like, a seven or eight grand, uh, Les Gibson, Les Paul, 58 reissue or something and it's a sort of binding but it was like aged binding but it looked like it had been artificially aged whereas when you get it real aging it doesn't look the same and so, you know, especially with you know, things like that that white guitar you can fake the fact that it's gone yellow but it doesn't look exactly like the fact that it's 40 years old and gone yellow on its own um but i mean it's actually it's actually, it's actually in very good condition um the only thing I've got to confess to is, see, when I unbolted the neck, a bit of, this bit of paint came off when I took the neck plate off, but it somehow attached itself, so I've kind of damaged the guitar. I've got the wee bits of paint there if you really want to try and stick them back on again, but um, that was that was when I was un undoing the bolt. Not really anything you can do about that. Uh, you can't actually see it when you're playing, so... I don't think we're on the point of... That's the sort of thing, if you've got a 10 grand guitar, then that cut of chip would make a difference. But it's, it's, it's a guitar, it's been played, it's not it's not a, a case queen. Generally, see, honestly, if you see one of these guitars or anything from this sort of era, the sort of late 80s, that is in absolutely mint, never played condition, there might be something wrong with it. That's why it never got played, because it wasn't very good. Uh, my Fender Music Master bass is like that. It's like the neck on it, it's like no dents in it at all. And you're like, this is 1978, how can it not have any dents in it? And it's because the, the truss rod was all over the place. I needed to do quite a lot of work to make the thing play. And it's basically just because it was never really very good. It had lots of dents in the body from, I think, getting moved about, but never played. Um, so uh, the sign of, you know, a bit of fretware and stuff like that does imply it must have been good. So you're worth persevering. But when I say it's got fretware and stuff, very little dents and damage on it, so it's been looked after. So whoever was had it first or over the years has thought it was good. And well, it does make a difference. <laughs> and just like a real telly, with a, the, the pickup switch. When you go to move the pickup switch, it's very common you accidentally turn the volume control down a little bit. Um, so it's authentic. Uh, and saying that, I don't do it. There's, there's quite a common mod to swap the telly plate round away so that the, the switch is here. And then you would make this the volume and this the tone, so it would be volume, tone, and then the switch. I mean, even John Fogarty does that. You know, you can do it. It's, it's, it's reversible, so it's fine. But I quite 
it's just one of the things you have to deal with with a telly, you know. It's the same the way people who like Bigsby's, they just accept the fact that it doesn't stay in tune, because, I mean, they, they, they just don't. Uh, but if you want a Bigsby, then you can have one, and it's like you can be very gentle with it, you can sort of, but you've got to deal with it. Um, so it's, it's that sort of thing. Authentic. <laughs> So there we go, I'm now start, starting to clear my backlog. I've now got uh, John Carter's uh, Roadster there. It doesn't, it really, it's, it's, it, it, it doesn't show up on camera, but see the colour of this thing? It's stunning. I do. I just put it on the wall there because it's, it's, it's up next. Um, that's done it, and a lovely uh, Aria Pro 2 Les Paul. The reason I haven't done them is because I've not been feeling well and it's, they were a wee bit more, you know, setting up a guitar's fine, but with them I've got to go out to the garage and grind things and do actual physical work. These aren't getting set up, these are getting modified or, yeah, modified. Um, it was a bit more work, didn't feel up to it. Now I do. So basically just now I'm a wee bit, a wee bit cheesed off that I didn't buy this. I saw it on Facebook Marketplace and I thought, because I had a Honor Arbor Series Strat and it was a lot of work to make it work. Um, so I just didn't bother with it and then my pal bought it. And I was like, oh, you're all right. So I'm going to have to do hundreds of work on it, but it wasn't bad. Um, I think a lot of, the, the reason that the Strat was bad was because it was really bad condition. It had been modified and dropped about and all that. And the frets were all knackered and all these things. Um, this one, goodbye. So, I mean, if, if you know how to fix these things up or you... It's not the sort of one, I don't think you'll get one like this, really cheap, playing like this. But you'll, you, it's possible to get one like this that doesn't play very well at all for cheap. And if you want to do it up, it's worth doing. It's not like a, you know, you get to the point, oh, I really need to replace. And it, it's, it's always a always danger about buying the sort of unknown, well, unknown to me, things like your Honor Arbor series. Because like so many other companies, oh, the 1987, this model, great. You might have found that at the same time they made a Les Paul that was awful from a different factory. and Or maybe in 1988, the Telecaster was terrible. Or, you know, it's like, because they don't actually, it's not like a company that makes guitars as such. They just hire factories to do it. And then that factory maybe didn't have enough, you know, their books were full. In 87 and 88, maybe the books were full. So I'm, I'm just, I'm not 100% knowledgeable, knowledgeable about them. My ears. um one of the Japanese things. And saying that, it might be Japanese. I don't know. Um, I think some some of them were. Could be, it doesn't say made in Japan on it, but that doesn't really signify that it definitely, it could have had made in Japan written on a sticker. And in 1987, made in Japan wasn't like a great thing. <laughs> Japan, ew. because people remembered, they used, you used to get awful guitars from the 70s in Japan. So, you know, 10 years later, you know, just pick off the Japan sticker. The same way they on my Telecoustic. Uh, I had a, a Fender Telecoustic and it had a, a black label on the inside that said, you know, Fender da da da, and it said made in China, and I was a wee bit naughty. I had a black pen and just put a line through where it said made in China. Not proud of it. But did it. Didn't damage your guitar in any way, and they're always made in China, so it's like, you know, but it's just like. But it's now. Nothing wrong with Chinese guitar. You can get there's, there's amazing guitars. I think the new BC Riches are Chinese, and they look amazing. They are fourteen hundred quid, but they look flipping amazing. So there you go. There's my wee five minute video coming in at twenty five minutes. Must be a good guitar. I would I would play this no more, uh, no problem at all. And I like the what you could argue dual sonic sound with the two single coils, two strap pickups. It just gives you that that sound in the middle is really. it's got a good weight to it. It doesn't feel like a cheap guitar. Um, I think, again, part of that's to do with the age. The, you know, you get, you get the ones that have got the rolled fingerboard edges you get now is like a main thing. This won't have had a rolled fingerboard edge, edges, but it does now from being played for 30 years. So it's all kind of comfy and good. And um, if it was mine, what modifications would I do? 
likely just leave it the way it was. Um, until I break something. Well, one of the problems with these sort of tuners is, uh, I suppose, any, like, like any tuner, if the guitar's been dropped on the tuners, they, they're maybe not that impact, they're not as impact resistant, maybe. But in saying that, you can still bend. This, this, but this guitar's been looked after. So, enough talking. Rock on, catch you during the week. And cheers for joining in the live stream last night. I had a, I had a great time, really enjoyed it. it. really perked me up. I felt, I'll be honest, I felt awful and didn't want to do it. Like about seven o'clock. And then the time eight o'clock came around, it was like, oh, I've got to do this. Oh. And then, well, you guys started talking. It was like, here we go. And then the bucky started flowing. And then it was like, oh, I felt amazing. Rock on. Catch you later.